This is back for Blood. We're on Xbox Series X, taking a look at what is basically Left 4 Dead 3. So what we're getting here is, I believe, a 4K resolution, probably dynamic, uh, at 60 FPS with HDR support. It's got crossplay. I am looking for the final spec details. I've been told by my contact that as soon as they have them, I will know they're going to send me a message, so... I'll follow up with more details. This is, of course, the beta experience, the closed beta, which will be an open beta where I'm assuming more people were going to check this out at. And, uh, yeah, I've been having a ton of fun with this. I think we've played about 17 hours, and I say we as in I've been playing with my one pal Kevin there. Uh, he comes and helps with some reviews, we do some streams together. Him and I have basically been playing an absolute ton of this game, and it has been a blast. This is definitely the Left 4 Dead 3 experience that I have been waiting a very long time for, and I'm genuinely quite excited and very happy with this, what this provides. So there's only two of us in, like, bots right now, as you're seeing, because I'm playing at, like, I don't know, 4 something in the morning. It's, it's pretty late. But anyways... What you're doing in the game is you are moving from spot to spot, uh, checkpoint to checkpoint, kind of getting to these safe rooms in order to outlast and survive against the horde. The game director is back, that means the dynamics of your combat are a little bit different, the enemies you face and everything like that change from time to time, and it just kind of creates a scenario where, well, you know, it's kind of a different setup each time you go and play it, and it looks really, really good. Like, visually, I, I think this is quite an impressive experience. And it's a lot of fun to play. Great co-op action. And a, a lot of surprises featuring tons of replayability. You can just go back and back and back and just enjoy the challenges. There's also versus mode, but I'm going to focus on the campaign element for a bit in regards to discussing and going over the experience thus far. Keep in mind that this is, again, a beta. So I mean, this is like an early look at the game. And yet I'm already just really loving what they've been able to achieve here it looks great it feels fantastic and it's just a complete blast to play you know there's always new challenges and the game also has a variety of different difficulty options so normal actually can provide quite a bit of difficulty to it but then you get one that has a 35 percent like a 35 percent damage rate to your teammates and then there's a nightmare mode that's even more hardcore where more damage is done to your squad and Nightmare is very hard. Now I think there's other elements to the difficulties too that aren't noted just because how hard it can be even going up to survivor difficulty. And it's kind of interesting to see these, you know, dynamics kind of come into play uh, as you progress through it. And we've seen in this beta two acts for, I can't believe a bot actually died there, uh, two acts for eight levels. You can also start at different levels when you create new runs because you get so many chances if you fail to redo things. And uh, yeah, you know, I actually do think it's mostly fairly balanced, but I do have an issue where a lot of ammo is spent. There's not enough ammo in this game that needs to be balanced better. Or they need to decrease the special infected because those ones take a lot of, you know, kind of bullets or they're really hard to deal with. So either we need more ammo or we need uh, less special infected. Actually, maybe a bit of both, right? It just seems really grindy to kind of deal with at the current point in time. And I constantly felt like I was running out of ammo. You won't see it yet, but we're like, you know, once you get through certain levels, you're just like halfway through the level. You've got no bullets. There's one part where you need to shoot this thing across a bridge and we're sitting there looking around the level for a gun because, you know, we don't have bullets to hit it. And it's like, kind of like, really? Uh, crows alert the horde. And like I said, if you've played Left 4 Dead in the past, Left 4 Dead 2, this one's going to feel right at home for you just in terms of you know, the different enemies you have to face, the, the foes you're taking on, the challenges along the way. This one really does, I believe, kind of bring that element to uh, the highest degree. It really is Left 4 Dead 3. It's, it's basically the sequel they wanted to make. And I'm very happy about that because I've been having a, a lot of fun playing this and I feel like you could just keep playing and playing and playing. Now, part of that that also makes it really easy to keep on playing over and over again is the card system. So this game has an element of cards, and everything you play in the game plays with the cards a little bit differently. So, you know, right off the bat here, you kind of get to pick a card, and then if you fail, you get a card. And you get to the next level, you get some more cards. And you can see the active cards here, so you get something like 15 health, uh, you get your bonus character cards, and then when you 
kind of do these supply runs in your like base hub area where you meet up with others, you group up, you get ready to play. In, in that area, you're able to actually do the supply run area where you spend the points that you earn while you play in order to unlock additional cards that you can use and you create these decks and there's going to be a lot of deck meta. Not only for the campaign in order to survive, but also the multiplayer because I think cards really do impact that one to a much higher degree. And I think that's going to be really fascinating for long-term conflicts and gameplay. It's, it's, it's really, really quite neat. And once again, the fun of the safety room, or the safe rooms kind of going from spot to spot, reading the fun little hilarious things on the side. And again, visually, it, it looks really good. Like the character models are excellent. The style of the environments are detailed. There's a lot of depth in what's going on. Lots of different enemy types that you have to fight. Uh, we got the thing we call the Spider-Man, you know, with the safe room loading. Anyways, it also loads really quickly, especially for next gen on Series X. Uh, it gives you these stat details through the supply points. That's how you, you buy the cards. You move from level to level. And uh, yeah, no, it, it's actually a, a ton of fun. I'm having a great time with this game. Seriously, genuinely, it is a blast. Uh, this has high potential. I'm, I'm really curious about the rest of the game, obviously, for a full review, which you'll be able to see later on. But for now, great time. I, I'm not even bored of it after like 17 hours of just playing on minimal content. So we talked about the campaign and the dynamics of it and some of the stuff you do in it and some of the points. So this is the card system. Can I show that off there? So ammo is kind of important to me. So we're going to use ammo, 25% more. And then the beginning, we go over here and we can buy stuff. Do we want better attachments? Do we want certain like weapons? What, what are we gonna bring in here? We're gonna do some pipe bombs. And uh, I don't know if we need a better melee weapon. Probably some ammo. And then you get ready to battle. There's gonna be a big boss here too, which is kind of funny. But I think this one decently balanced, but again, there are some parts to it that actually can be hard even on normal. But I think for the most part, they got the balancing right. The bots are pretty good, but they need to heal themselves a bit more, I've noticed. They, they don't seem to to do all the intensive healing, but that also allows you to balance things more. Because you can like you can heal them too, and you've got to monitor that if you're playing with bots. Because, you know, if there's not real players, you, you get bot fill, and it, it's a co-op game. It's definitely meant to be played together. I think you're going to see the giant ogre monster. And I love the details of not only... Uh, the, the like the people you're playing as, the humans, but also the the monsters, the ridden. Uh, there's also a backstory that I've been trying to piece together, and it has something to do with like bugs and bees. And, you know the characters; they have all this like story stuff that they're talking about. So I'm just trying to like, you know, get a cohesive idea of what's going on there. So I'm still trying to figure that out story-wise, and I'm sure once we'll know for my full review what that kind of looks like and you know how that's done. But this is the bot thing, this is like, or the boss thing that you're fighting against, this big ogre. Well, we'll see him again later on, I, you know, he's kind of done its thing. It's actually a lot easier now. I don't know if I've changed the difficulty, but it seemed like this was harder last time we went. But yeah, visually I'm impressed. The creatures look grotesque, especially the special effect. So let's talk about the versus mode. So in this game, uh, versus is not the traditional versus. I'd l I hope that they have that mode too, but it doesn't quite look like it yet. I mean, this is a beta too, right? So Versus in this game is they have picked a part of a level, and I'm assuming this is like a later level in the game just by the setup of it. Uh, it's kind of like a school ground, and then there's another one which is more of like a contamination zone with a little bit of a tease of an amusement park in the background, which would be great, because if you're a Left 4 Dead 2 fan, Dark Carnival is where it's at. Anyways, so what I'm saying is basically uh, you do 4v4, uh, it, it's really, like, the matchmaking is really glitchy on it, so I hope they fix that. Uh, well, I mean, I would imagine for the full game they will, because, like, you know, you join with, like, not enough players, if everybody on the other team quits, the match still keeps going on, which is kind of stupid, and, and both teams lose, it's just, that's nah, silly. Anyway, so, when you get a good match going, it's actually pretty competitive, and it's actually pretty back and forth, uh, depending on how your team works together and stays in a group. This is where the card system comes in. So you have your cards, and you can be these classes. So I'm like a medic class, for example. And then I add like uh, cards into it, I change how I heal, so like if I heal someone, I get that health back too as like a perk, or uh, we can heal each other for bonuses, or you know, things like that. And you add cards and you take away, well, you add cards every time you go in battle. And it's like a best of three, so you have to win, you know, two rounds. 
which is neat. You go through these different areas, and it like, you know, rotates, so you're never doing the same scenarios over and over again. You got it's, it's more like a survival, though. Uh, it's not like moving around a map. You're in one area, you get pushed inward. It's kind of Battle Royale-esque. And you just get pushed more and more and more and more. And then eventually, you know, after like five to seven minutes, you're like just barely holding on. But the other team, they're playing as a special infected, and they are putting points. They're, they're earning points constantly. And then they put these points into either themselves, or I would suggest into the common infected. So you can make the common infected become all like bubbly and, you know, kind of grotesque and more damagey to your enemies. Damagey, funny. But you know what I mean, they do more damage, they cause more issues. So you're kind of, like, as the infected, not only being strategic as in we need to kill these survivors as fast as possible, you're kind of also being like, okay, how do we use, you know, these, these creatures around us to kill these guys faster? And I think that dynamic is really quite fascinating. And like I said, there is a ton of in-depth strategy there that only becomes more and more complex the more, you know, cards people have, the more systems they have. And that's where I'm saying the meta, the cards... I think is going to be genuinely quite exciting uh, as we see, you know, more of the game, the full game launch. You're going to see people doing like guides for the different things, and this is where I'm saying like ammo constantly out of ammo, constantly, constantly, constantly out of ammo. Every point of this game gets frustrating, especially fighting this thing. It's like oh, I need ammo, but I can't get it. But anyways, uh, the multiplayer quite a lot of fun. I have a great time with it. I, I think it offers just like unlimited replayability as you phase off against different people. And when it's working well, it's beautiful. It's really cool. But I also do hope they add the traditional uh, move through the levels kind of verses because I thought that was really cool uh, from Left 4 Dead. But, you know, things change, things evolve. But I, I, I do really love that version of it. So hopefully there's other modes or, or variations on the versus as well. Because I think this game has unlimited potential. It really seems like something, if they are to update this with content occasionally, that you could play this for like years to come. It is a blast. Again, it's like, you know, I think some people, I've, I've definitely read it while I was doing live streams, have some complaints, but I, I think for the most part, this is 100% the Left 4 Dead 3 that they wanted to make. It's got the complexities that evolve the formula, but it feels very familiar. It doesn't take very long to get into, and I, I think it takes quite a while to master as you try to, you know, get different weapons, get different upgrades, take on the challenges. And like I said, nightmare difficulty, you want a real challenge, that is a goddamn challenge. <laughs> that one definitely expects a lot out of you. We, we could barely do the survivor playing with like a group. And I mean, you know, how you have more people playing with you, you're going to be better off. You know, because it is a game where co-op is the focus. You need to be a team. You need to be a squad to be effective. And I, I just, I love the card system. I, I love the challenges. I really like what they put together here. It feels good. It plays very well. It is unique, and it is perfectly, uh, you know, sort of a, I guess, spiritual successor to the Left 4 Dead series. It's a shame that they couldn't actually make this as part of the brand, but at the same time, da 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 you know, they put together something that feels just like it, but for the modern era. And for me, that's exciting. I have a lot of fun with this. Uh, my pal had a lot of fun with this. And I just want the whole game right now. <laughs> I'm very, very excited for the rest of the experience. Because I think that this, you know, something I could sit there and just play for countless hours and just have an absolute blast of a time with. Again, coming up for further cards. So these are the corruption cards. These are a neat extra thing. So someone's kind of picked that. We've got the corruption card there, so we get we get a bonus. So we could get if we do like the task, we grab that thing, we get it done. Uh, I'm gonna do the reload speed. So there's also bad cards. So when we're playing on the survivor difficulty. You know what's even harder than uh, regularly running through it? Running through a thick fog where you could barely see in front of you. So they've got these corruption cards that actually make it even harder for you to survive. And I think that's really cool too, because it amps up that difficulty to an even higher degree, and it provides you with an additional challenge if you're not finding that the game is challenging enough. And I think that in itself is actually quite fascinating. You not you don't know what you're going to get for those corruption cards. The they could be all kinds of things. Seat. And that just further changes the variation. Oh, Happy Turtle, because it's Turtle go. Rock Studios. <laughs> and these books are kind of funny too. 
lots of little memes and easter eggs especially if you read like some of the print on the board like that's a zombie land reference and you know stuff like that kind of funny but yeah like i'm saying th this is something that you could sit here and you could just like replay and replay and replay and keep replaying play with different friends play by yourself find randoms online the fact that it has crossplay is extra perfect that's just more experiences you can have easier with other people very very well done i think they've got like a really well done formula here and like i said if this is something that they support long term and they keep adding content to it they've they've really got a winning game so these you get like a tool thing and you can unlock like a room there and you get like items and stuff except for this map they put it like right near the beginning and i don't get that because they kind of need it more like halfway through and like I said, there's there's slight variations each time you play it. You know, different things you come across, different scenarios. I do wish that the levels maybe changed a little bit when you move through them. They seem to be very, like, sort of static with their setup. Uh, whereas in Left 4 Dead, I remember those ones being a bit more dynamic in the scenarios. So I don't know if that's just for the beta or not. Again, you're going to have to review the full game at some point down the road, right? But for now... Oh, crap. Very happy with what we got here playing good, it's feeling right. I think that was a bad one to get. Anyways, <laughs> good challenge, good dynamics to it, it mixes things up. Uh, I like the balance of the villain. Oh, I should also mention for the special effect, it, it seems like a lot of what they did was combine various characters from Left 4 Dead. Uh, such as the spitter, and then I would say the hunter kind of one, the boomer, and the spitter also, I think, as well. But there's, like, they kind of combine them. That thing we call the Spider-Man, because it's, like, jumps on walls and stuff, and it spits. That's my favorite versus character. And I know we're focusing on just the, the campaign right now, but it's a little hard at this hour to get you know, full matches going, especially with the uh, the beta closing soon for the closed beta and then going to an open beta later on. But for what we got here, this is great. You know, they, they've put together something that is exciting, that is thrilling, and that I am thoroughly hyped to the highest degree to see what the full version is like. So we're just going to have some extra gameplay here if you just want to see some with a little bit of quiet, and uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of it. And, you know, liking the video is great, subscribing is great as well, and, of course, we will have more Back for Blood streams and otherwise uh, in the future, because we are having so much fun playing this. See what you've got for us. Need ammo. Who said the military doesn't prepare you for civilian life? the way. 